Are you or someone you know looking to buy or sell a home? When you use a HomeGain Realtor to buy or sell a home, you can get $150. Visit HomeGain.com and click on the Promo 150 banner at the top of the page to get started. Compare HomeGain Realtors and choose your favorite. Complete your home purchase or sale transaction with a HomeGain Realtor and HomeGain will pay you $150. Get started today by going to HomeGain.com. Welcome back, Washington, D.C. Metro, to Real Estate 360 Live. I'm your host, Ryan Sloper. I'm joined today by my guest, Louis Camarosano, the general manager of HomeGain. Quick reminder, Real Estate 360 is designed to build the Washington, D.C. Metro's housing and credit markets one house at a time. If you ever have any questions, whether it's finance-related, you're trying to get a home loan, um, to purchase a home or to refinance, whether you're trying to get your credit fixed so that you can set yourself up to be in a position to buy a home within the next two to six, six months to a year, or whether it's just, you know, you're, you're in a bind and you're upside down in your home and you're really just not sure what the best options are, I'm here to help. The number is 877-245-2030. That's 877-245-2030. Or you can reach out via the web at realestate360live.com. That's realestate360live.com. It's time for this week's Market Movers. This segment was brought to you by HomeGain. HomeGain is the place to get you started buying or selling a home, finding a realtor, and getting real estate questions answered. Go to homegain.com today to see what I'm talking about. All you have to do is type in your home address, and you'll get an instant free estimate of your home's value online. It's a great way to monitor your home's value, and it's totally free. So check that out today at homegain.com. So as I spoke earlier, um, last week there was a very weak employment report that drove interest rates lower. Um, basically, the 10-year yield dropped back down. Uh, treasuries will auction off $66 billion of notes and bonds beginning Tuesday, uh, I believe, and on, on Thursday and Friday. The PPI and CPI for March will be reported. So these will be big numbers to, to pay attention to if you are trying to time the market perfectly. Now, remember, you know, Mortgage-backed securities and interest rates, they hate inflation. So any hint of inflation will drive interest rates up. As far as Bernanke's concerned, he thinks that inflation is tame, it's, it's, it's under control, and it's not, you know, not a big deal. We shouldn't have to worry about it. But like I said, I think that the numbers are skewed. They'll probably come back in line. I'm sure that the CPI will probably come in line uh, under that 2% marker of where, where they want it to be. Uh, so interest rates... My prediction is probably they probably won't move too much for that report, but I've been wrong before. And the smartest play that you can make most of the time is just err on the side of caution. If you're happy with the lowest, pretty much the lowest interest rates in history as, as of right now, uh, take advantage of those. Go ahead and lock those in. Um, the stock market pr- pretty much took a beating last Friday, so the market opened weaker again this morning. And the 10-year note ended Friday at 2.05%, which is down 16 basis points on the week. Uh, and that's a, that, you know, that's a big move for the 10 year. So I think that it's now gone below the, uh, moving average, a 30 day moving average. So I think that rates should probably hold pretty tight here for a little while, unless we get some sort of, of big rally in the stock market. And Lewis, I don't really think that there's anything that's, that's coming. I mean, we get every time that we've gotten more and more out of Europe, it seems like, you know, rates tend to drop back. Have you noticed that? Yeah, that's what happens. You know, when the CPI gets released and you're probably right, it'll come in relatively tame, but the food and energy, what they call the non-core, will probably spike. Yep. Of course, you'll get an immediate reaction that that's temporary or it's caused by speculation or yep. something that Bernanke will say. And, and you really can't believe what he says because he's on record as saying that the low interest rate environment of the early 2000s, mid-2000s, had nothing to do with the housing crisis. Right. So, you know, you can't really believe when he says that uh, – Gas prices are temporarily high. I think Joe Biden says the same same thing. And right, frankly, I believe that's all just tied into um, the president's reelection campaign. Because if you can believe unemployment is going down, even though not many people are getting jobs, and that gas prices are temporarily high, you give the guy another chance. Yeah. If, if you mention that it's structural in the economy, the unemployment and the inflation, that's a different story. Yeah, and it's interesting because it, there's a lot of, of things going on right now or, or these kind of decisions about government programs and what, whether they're going to potentially, um, Fannie and Freddie, allow for principal write-downs on their mortgage. These are, to me, motivated, obviously, politically more than anything else. 
uh, as we know, there's, you know, all these are an acronyms for all the different government programs, HAMP, HARP, uh, you know, half of all, all the different programs that are out there. And they really help, help only a small, very, very small portion of the overall people in the United States. And I, I really don't think even if they were to come out and say Fannie and Freddie is going to accept principal write downs, which their big reason for not wanting to do that anyway was for the moral hazard of, you know, everybody that's currently paying their mortgage on time is going to say, OK, well, we're going to miss a payment so we can qualify for that. I would I, that, in my in my point of view, it's it's a just leave it alone. No matter, no matter what you do, you have to let this thing shake out like it's supposed to. And to, to keep, you know, tampering with the market and whether it's the Fed, whether it's the government, you get all of them need to keep their hands out of it because we're never going to see, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel until just the overall market can can, you know, we can have a, a, a true market, which is, is not what's going on right now. Right. Free markets work in a way that central planners can never hope to operate. Right. And central planning, all it does is, for political reasons, it tries to look like it's trying to help the economy. And really, it's only helping, as you mentioned, a small subset segment of the population, normally the rich and powerful. And then what they end up doing is messing up the rest of the economy, which puts you into this um, vicious circle of having to continue to intervene, thinking you're gonna, next time you'll fix it, or if I only spent more money, I only borrowed more money, or only offered it to these people, and then it never ends, and then, of course... The economy never gets gets its footing back and never gets its equilibrium. I mean, you saw that in the Great Depression, one program after the other. It took 13 years in a war before the Great Depression ended. In fact, someone's done a study that there was a depression in 1920-21, and basically the Fed and the government did nothing, and it was over in about 8 to 12 months. Right. The market figures out where to allocate the money, and the people, the, the individuals and the companies, they spend money in a free market or they save money, and they're not artificially induced to, to do anything other than what they would naturally do in a depression, which may be to save your money and not to try to go out and spend it. And once your capital builds up and people have saved their money, then they can put it back into the economy and it becomes productive again. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And, and, you know, it's it's interesting to me because, you know, we have such a low interest rate environment right now. I Ultimately, my fear is that, okay, so... We're in the DC metro area. We have prices that are that are rising. A lot of competition because we have a low supply of homes here. Um, very transit. A lot of jobs. We, we've been over this time and time again that it, it's a it's a it's a good uh, overall housing market. Now, things can shift relatively fast. If we were to go from four, a four percent rate in, interest rate environment to a six percent interest rate environment, things would change dramatically. You would see the price of homes basically start to dip back down because homes aren't as affordable anymore and people are going to have to unload their houses. Now, if you're not looking to to buy your house and flip it and sell it right now and you're locking yourself in at a low interest rate of, of around 4%, depending upon what your qualifications are, then you're protected no matter what happens. You're protected for 30 years on your fixed rate mortgage. But You have a hedge there. You, you know, if it goes up, it's not going to go up by much. Yep. But if it goes down, then you're protected. And you controlled your 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 cost of, of living. You your know? cost of shelter remains the same. And if rents go higher, you win. If interest rates go a bit lower, well, you might have done better, but you're not going to do much better. And over time, if you average it over 30 years, you can almost be assured that locking in your current cost of shelter now for 30 years is going to be a bargain. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's a unbelievable bargain right now. And like I gave the example in the last segment about the person that was just trying to refinance their primary residence and has over a million dollars and they want a $400,000 loan, they can't get one. That kind of tells you that, you know, the people that are out there buying right now, the majority of them, or the people that are looking for the deals and able to actually take advantage of them, the foreclosures and, and short sales where they can get some sort of a discount, they're paying cash. They're paying cash for these properties. Um, there's huge funds that are being set up. You know, I'm talking, you know, three, four, five hundred, six hundred million dollar funds that are going in and buying distressed assets, whether it's at the courthouse auction or it's that's whether it's at the steps or they're buying it as just a foreclosure REO from the bank or whether it's a short sale that's discounted. But they're looking for these deals. There's also a lot of foreign money coming in where their currency is stronger than the United States dollar. And, Lewis, this is something I wanted to bring up because a lot of, of, of retail investors in the United States now are getting kind of frustrated because they're like, well, how is somebody coming in and bidding something up to 90 cents on the dollar here in the United States? What are they going to do with that? Well, 
if their money was coming from uh, you know another country where their currency is stronger by maybe another twenty percent or so, they're not really buying it at ninety cents. They're getting right. they're getting it cheaper, and that's where we're seeing a huge influx of money from from from, from abroad here, and they're buying up all our real estate because they're looking at it. It's a, it's a numbers game. They can buy. If you, if you look at it, Ryan, the initial reason to keep interest rates low was to get all Americans into a home. While they kept interest rates low, the prices rose, people defaulted, so Americans get kicked out of their house, and now because they devalue the dollar, foreigners can buy the houses. So that's an unintended consequence of trying to goose the market in a way to get every American into a home. You end up having more foreigners in U.S. homes. Yeah, and, and the interesting, even what's even more interesting, Lewis, is on some of these, these bank owned REOs. They're more inclined to take these investors' offer versus taking somebody that's trying to buy the property as a primary residence. You know what I mean? Like, this is somebody that's actually looking for a home to live in it. But no, it's a cash offer. We'd rather sell it to the investor for, for even $5,000, $10,000 less. Well, sure. You don't have the credit risk. Exactly. So, I mean, it, and, and, and the timing risk either you, that the deal won't go through, and also you get your money faster from a cash investor. Yeah. And how much you have to check other than that the money is actually real and it's in your account when. The person says they, they sent it. And, and, and just knowing that investors are buying up so many of these properties, that's a pretty telling sign to me that we're going to start to see pretty dramatic uh, increase in, in rental prices as well. And well lot, because they're looking for a return on their investment. Yeah, and then, and, you know, if we're talking about a subdivision and all of a sudden, you know, it was only maybe 20% rentals, now is all of a sudden 50% rentals. There's not enough homes to buy out there. There's limited supply, and there's a limited supply of rentals. Prices are going to shoot through the roof, and it's going to happen fast. Well, you know what's going to happen, Ryan? If those 9 million supposed shadow inventory foreclosures come onto the market, those people are going to be looking to rent. They probably are not going to move right into the housing market to buy, so there will be at least a temporary uh, surge in the number of renters looking to rent, and there will be a limited supply of rental homes. So. I guess the investors are ahead of the market right now trying to purchase those homes and get them ready to rent so that when people are foreclosed upon, they can service that market. Yeah, it's interesting. When we come back from our break, Lewis, we're actually going to jump into that. And that second foreclosure tsunami that they claim is coming, I want to dive into that for what that means for people that are out there searching for a home. And are they really going to be able to get a deal uh, or is it just more lip service from the media? When we come back, stay right there.